So here I am approaching Fraser Jackson's studio and I can begin to hear some bassoon music. So this is our traditional meeting ritual with yeah. <laughs> soloists. Coffee. They make me a coffee. Yeah. And so what machine do you have? Because that's more important have, than anything else. I have a Rancilio Miss Sylvia. Oh, nice. It's bought it on eBay. So, yeah. Look at the stove, it's so clean. You obviously don't cook, right? <laughs> Do you do a lot of takeout? <laughs> Just yeah, kidding. Really. <laughs> my, my wife wants to clean the kitchen. Oh, it's nice. It is nice. Me too. It looks beautiful. So this is nice. Roncesvalles Village. Yep. So uh, bassoon players drink coffee. Oh yeah. Even though you're allowed to use those sharp instruments. That's right. The knives. Yeah. I've got to keep my caffeine down if I'm going to read me. Because well, I remember uh, the, all the years that I spent with uh, uh, Cynthia and Quartetta Gelato on the road. Oh, yeah. Like most of her time was spent when we weren't practicing, was spent uh, working on reeds. Oh, and yeah. so that. The worst uh, have it really bad. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad for us, but and, it's worse for them. So there's that running joke, you know, with percussionists that uh, they're paid to move the equipment and they play for free. So is it the same with uh, <laughs> double reed players? Yeah. That they're kind of. Yeah. Paid to make reads and they play for free? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, we never have time to practice because we're too busy making reads. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the beautiful cappuccino I got. <laughs> Fraser. Oh, yeah. And someone in the room doesn't want to be in the video. Yes, and it's, it's not me. the kitty no, cat Stuart, who is very healthy and friendly. There he is. All right. Well, thank you for this coffee. And what is this? This is well, like spectacular. My, my grandfather was actually a painter. Um, so these are both paintings of his. Oh my god. It's, uh, wow. Yeah, so this is just kind of a surreal, I guess like a Canadian surrealism, this one. I have a piece of driftwood that he liked. And, and this? This is actually a portrait of my mother. That's uh, By the window. Yep, and this is in, uh, in my grandfather's studio, which was over uh, by the Rosedale subway. Um, so Toronto. Yep, yep, he was, uh, Amazing. He was pretty well known in the 30s. So I'm here with uh, Fraser Jackson. Uh, bassoon player extraordinaire and is a lovely um, a studio where you teach and your wife teaches as well. Right. Who's a pianist. She's a pianist, yeah. Um, how long have you been with the symphony, with Toronto Symphony? 27 years now. Amazing. Long time. Yeah. And do you still remember when you first, like, did your first uh, uh, performance with them? And oh, yeah. Absolutely. It was a trial. Yeah, they were trying me out, <clears throat> trying me out for a week and right. I was at Ontario Place when we still Oh, the, the revolving stage? <clears throat> yep. Yes. And I remember getting the news that I had been hired and looking out on the skyline of Toronto at night just thinking, wow, this is, this is a dream come true. This isn't a bad way to make a living? Not at all. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, bassoon, I, mean, I have to confess, it's uh, 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 one of my favorite instruments. You know, if Great. I had to choose, but I've always been uh, like in love with the, uh, the sound of the instrument and uh, the uh, agility that you can have on such a like a such mm -hmm. a, a, a massive kind of instrument in terms of like just it's a big instrument really yeah but, yeah it's to, to get around like yeah your hands i know i i see the hands are always like stretched out and like pretty much yeah in fact you a lot of a lot of it's it's a funny instrument that way because you can't actually start when you're super young because you, you need you know minimum size hands exactly. so a lot of a lot of people, I didn't start till I was 13, and that's that's pretty typical of, you know. And what did you play before that? Um, I tried, you know, a little piano, a little recorder, uh, even a very little bit of trombone, I mean, all kinds of things. Or they had, at high school, that's where I started, yeah. And my original plan, I wanted to play in the stage band, I wanted to be a saxophonist, yes. saxophonist. And, uh, and our teacher at the time, he wouldn't let you start on sax. You had to start on another woodwind, and then moved to sax after a year. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll just pick something. And I thought, well, that looks kind of weird. I'll do that. Right. So I picked the bassoon, and uh, and I never switched off it. I, I just was, I just clicked with it. I just, uh, I thought it was a great. Uh, I just loved everything about it. The interesting thing about the bassoon, as well, is that there's two different schools of it. There's the French bassoon. Right. And then yeah. you've got, uh, is that that's the German bassoon, correct? Yeah. I'll, I'll bring it over. This is. Um, yeah, this is a German bassoon. The, the French bassoon is almost extinct. It's unfortunate because it's really an interesting instrument. It's very, it, it's it's a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, and it's it evolved less from the Baroque bassoon 
So it, it's a little, it's interesting, but it really only played in France and some places in Belgium. And even then, in the in the late 1800s, uh, the Germans did this big refit because the the thing about the French bassoon is it's it's a pretty quiet instrument. Yes, um, it, it's really it's got a beautiful sound, but. Uh, not super great projections. And, and you have to keep it uh, like well oiled as well, I think, because it, the, it yeah. doesn't really have a finish on it, does it? Yeah, that's true. It, it, uh, it's sort of more, more the bare wood. Yeah, it's true. And so how, how much maintenance do you have to do on your instrument? Well, there's <laughs> a lot that I'm supposed to do, but uh, um, I, different players have different tolerance levels, but the, the keys can get pretty noisy, so you have to do you know, every every four or five months, you have to just put grease in all the little right. connections to keep that noise down. Yeah, because it, it can sound a little bit like an accordion. Yeah, right. I love the accordion, actually. There yeah. you go. You yeah, the accordion is surprisingly noisy when you're playing. Yeah. The keys are just yeah. like crazy noisy. Between that and the breathing of the... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Wow. Now, the... Uh, uh, Weber uh, Concerto, of course, uh, along with the Mozart, are the two kind of pinnacle concertos, uh, you yeah. know, from that period right. that, that showcased the bassoon, which mm -hmm. is uh, amazing because I, I would think that there would be more written, but it, it was didn't really catch on, did it? Yeah, it didn't catch on. I think it was it was one of those instruments that, that didn't get enough attention early. I think, you know, they, they sort of, they figured out a way to redo the flute fingerings to make them better and the clarinet they spent a lot of effort on, but but bassoon, I think, got a little forgotten. So I think composers were a little bit like, well, oh, you know, that, that doesn't play well in tune, and it's a little bit hard to hear. Let's just forget yeah. it. Yeah. But I think, um, obviously, lately, the bassoon technology has really been getting good. So there's, there's, you know, if you start looking at contemporary concertos, there's a lot more really interesting things being written now. For yeah, absolutely. And uh, so that's, uh, hey, that's fun, fun to be a part of that. But as far as the classical era goes, and, and you know, in Baroque times, the bassoon was a big star. I mean, Fivaldi wrote, you know, 37 concertos, and, you know, every every village would have a bassoon just to play the bass line in, in things, you know, and, and so, yeah, the classical era, it, 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 it got a little less popular just because the, they were trying to, you know, the, they were trying to make the bassoon play uh, better, and, and there, were, there was a lot of innovation done on the bassoon, which mm -hmm. didn't always make it better. I know a lot of bassoonists who play period instruments, they say that Baroque bassoon is actually a better instrument. Mm -hmm. The classical bassoon got a little bit iffy. Right. So, uh, but now, yeah. And are you at the mercy of the world's um, cane supply for your reeds? Yes. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know that there, there are, sometimes there's a drought of, of good yeah. good reed making cane. Yeah, no, it's, it's a problem these days. The, uh, the you know, areas in France where where, where traditionally the best cane comes from, they're uh, they're getting a little bit uh, fished out. You know, they, they uh, so there's a lot of you know a lot of the sources of wild cane don't exist anymore, and the and, and even and the domesticated cane you know, it's very subject to weather. So have they done anything um, synthetic like a a, yeah. a plastic reed or what? actually yes, there's um, I have a whole box of them here. But uh, there's a fellow in Barrie, actually, who's uh, so a Canadian, who's done fantastic work on uh, on making plastic reeds. So oh my goodness! There you go. I have one right there. They're clear. Yeah, they're clear, and uh, they work. Can I? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it in for a close up. Yeah. That's amazing. Yep. Yeah. No, he's worked really hard. They do. They uh, they're su they're surprisingly good. And they sound. Yeah. They're they nice, they, uh, full. Yeah. They've got that that kind of romantic bassoon quality still. Yeah, they don't quite play as loud as a, a normal reed, but but. Uh, wow, not bad. That's really nice. Yeah. So, so that would save like um, you know bassoon students who are first starting out like a, a lot of heartache. Yeah. Right, and so that's why I, sometimes I'll. I'll hand those out to students. They're they're a bit expensive because the idea is, you know, once you get a read that works, you basically have it for ten years. So wow. So the initial investment's a little bit hefty, but then you know you always have a read that works. It's amazing. Wow. Some of the guys in the Berlin Philharmonic play them. So, wow. Yeah. So there you go. Now that's an established orchestra. Yeah. You know they're not they're not shabby. They're, they're so no, and you know what? Moving with the times is has to be part of uh, a musician and an artist's growth. Yeah. 
you know, we, we evolve, uh, you know, the violin, everyone thinks that the Stradivarius violin is, is the, the best sounding violin because of what he did when he built them, but mm -hmm. many people don't realize that like, they've all been opened up and they've got mm -hmm. modern uh, sound boards inside and okay. the sound post is completely different than what he had okay. and that's what makes them, you know, right. sound like that, you know, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that, yeah. you know, you're, you're dealing with an amazing craftsman. Right. So, you know, I think that uh, evolution, I mean, that's for me, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, being involved in computers, having a studio mm -hmm. and uh, all this technology is like, you know, I've always yeah. welcomed it. I've never been afraid of it. Absolutely. No, yeah. it's, I mean, if it makes the music sound better, then... Uh, and I know we've run through this piece um, a couple of times with the orchestra and um, it's really exciting and so thank you so much for agreeing to do it. Well, looking forward to it. It's and fun. you're going to be doing a little arrangement of a Christmas piece that I've arranged. Absolutely. A Christmas song. Yeah, that's going to so, be fun. Yeah, I'm doing that for, um, well, I think we may do it as a uh, string quartet plus you or we may use the whole string section. Great. So it's really exciting. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. Looking forward to it. That's Two. December 10th, yep. 3 o'clock in the afternoon at Burlington Performing Arts Center. See you then. Thank you.